Okay, hello everyone. Um, welcome at the new Root Labs at Lunch session. Um, my name is Orion, and um, I am the Grandmaster of the Machine Learning Guild at Data Roots. Um, these guilds is a new framework that we've introduced here at the Data Roots, where we try to share our expertise and all our knowledge together with um, all our, our colleagues. And um, this in three main uh, domains which is in DevOps, data engineering, and machine learning. Through these guilds, um, employees at Data Roots um, can start their own initiative, and they can um, start their own project on, um, on the budget if it uh, has been approved uh, by the company. We're also responsible for every month uh, for content for this Root Labs at Lunch session, and uh, this month, it's uh, the turn for uh, the machine learning guilds. In this first edition, Waikit will enlighten us on real-time voice cloning and how to um, deploy this into a, a very lightweight app um, in Python. Well, the word is to you, Waikit. Uh, thank you for the introduction, uh, Dorian. Uh, I will share my screen uh, with some sound. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so, oh, yeah. Okay. So, I can hear somebody's bell. Uh, yeah, it's mine, but skip. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, welcome to my talk. Um, in this presentation, I will build a real time voice transfer app using uh, Streamlit. So, this talk will consist of uh, two parts. So, I will first introduce uh, the model on voice transfer, and then I will talk a bit more about Streamlit. So let's dive right in. What is voice transfer? Voice transfer is also more well known as voice cloning. This is the artificial simulation of a person's voice and it is used um, or it can be used uh, for people uh, who, who lost their voice so that you can um, yeah, clone their voice. Uh, it's also very interesting to transfer voice across uh, different languages. And when there's a noisy uh, setting or a low resource setting, then you can also generate uh, speech from text. So a little bit more about the context of voice cloning. So when you want to clone somebody's voice, it's very impract impractical for many speakers. This means that you need a huge corpus of hours of recorded speech for a single speaker. So giving a new voice to such a model is very expensive because each time you want to copy somebody's voice, you need to record a lot of new data. And afterwards, you also need to retrain the model each time. So what is the goal or how do we approach this problem? we try to apply transfer learning. Transfer learning is where you want to transfer knowledge from one task with a lot of labeled data. In this case, generating a speech from text to relate a task with very little labeled data. And this little labeled data in this case means the speech for one unique speaker. So you can generalize or you can uh, specialize the idea of synthesizing speech for one uh, specific uh, user. So we will use this uh, transfer learning ID in a text to speech uh, context, and we do it in a zero shot setting, which basically means that we um, transfer a voice that is not seen before in a training set while training on different voices. So how do we do this? We decouple the speaker modeling, which models um, a specific uh, unique set of characteristics for one speaker from the speech synthesis. The speech synthesis by which I mean uh, going from text to a certain speech pattern. So the first part will be making or training a speaker discriminative embedding network. And the second part will consist of a text to speech network conditioned on a unique embedding for one speaker. Uh, a unique embedding by which I mean more or less some kind of unique uh, fingerprint 
for that um, yeah, specific uh, user. So I will introduce the framework for the voice transfer. And this voice transfer, also called uh, real-time voice cloning, is based on GIA et al. 2018. And it consists of three parts. Uh, the three uh, parts are shown in the figure below. The first part consists of a speaker encoder shown in a green box and it's based on generalized end-to-end -end, um, loss um, from 1 et al. to 1 17. Um, after training the speaker encoder, which generates a unique embedding for an uh, utterance of a yeah, speaker, you train a synthesizer. And this synthesizer um, is based on Tacotron from Wag et al. to 1 17. And after you generate your uh, male spectrogram uh, shown, uh, which is outputted by the synthesizer, it uh, will be converted to um, waveform by the vocoder. So let me go over each of the three stages. So the first part is the speaker encoder. And this speaker encoder takes in a reference speech, which is a sequence of a log male spectrogram from a speech utterance. So the male spectrogram, it's um, is a frequency channel which is more closer to human speech, and the speaker encoder is trained on this, and it will generate an embedding that captures the unique characteristics of the speaker. And the embedding is shown on uh, the right parts of uh, the figure, and you can see, uh, you can understand this as the unique fingerprint of. Yeah, a speaker's uh, voice for one specific uh, utterance. So embeddings of utterances for the same speaker have, have a high cosine similarity, which means that they are uh, closely um, uh, clustered together in an embedding space, uh, as opposed to uh, utterances from uh, two different speakers. They are um, yeah, clustered very far from each other. In the second part, after you generate your speaker embedding, you have the synthesizer. And this specific uh, synthesizer um, extends the attention mechanism of Tacotron 2 to support multiple speakers. And after generating your speaker embedding, it will be uh, given to the synthesizer. And this synthesizer will take in a specific grapheme or phoneme sequence and conditioned on a speaker embedding, it will decode a specific sentence to a log male spectrogram with the unique characteristics of one user. So I will make it a bit more um, concrete. So the synthesizer is trained on pairs of text transcript and target audio. And conditioned on your embedding, it will be mapped to, yeah, it, it will be mapped to a sequence of phonemes and it will be trained in a yeah, transfer learning configuration so that it will generate a male spectrogram. So hello world in this case will be mapped to yeah, pairs of um, yeah, phonemes. And in this example, it will be shown more concrete. So on the left side, we have male spectrograms and at the top of each uh, spectrogram, we have uh, the specific sentence that is used to train the model. So here on top, you see a certain sentence and all his brothers and sisters stood around and listened with their mouths open. And the corresponding male spectrogram with this sentence is uh, shown below. So now, how exactly does the synthesis of a male spectrogram work based on a specific sentence? So you give a certain sentence. In this case, this is a big red apple. And a synthesizer, it breaks apart the sentence in phonemes. Phonemes are the smallest uh, yeah, distinguishable um, yeah, vo vocal um, available in the language. So in this case, it will be broken apart in different letters and yeah, phonemes, basically. And based on this uh, sequence of phonemes, a uh, male spectrogram will be synthesized, conditioned to unique characteristics of a voice. So the first uh, row, it's a female speaker. And 
you see that uh, higher frequencies are activated and this is reflected um, in the corresponding uh, MEL spectrogram. So conditioned on the unique characteristics of uh, an embedding of a voice uh, of, of a specific user, a MEL spectrogram will be created. And in the bottom uh, MEL spectrogram, you have the voices of uh, male users who um, activate a lower frequencies. And this is um, shown correspondingly in, in the MEL spectrograms. So this is basically how MEL spectrograms, uh, how synthesizers work. And after the MEL spectrograms are generated, these are given to a vocoder. And this vocoder basically generates uh, the waveform. So it inverts the synthesized MEL spectrogram into time domain waveforms, which we can um, understand and, and hear basically. So the MEL spectrogram captures the entire variety of a voice and is capable of basically simulating uh, different speakers. So the MEL spectrum contains all the information that we need to generate a voice in such a way that we can distinguish it from different speakers. So these are the three stages of our model and the data sets used to train this model are VCTK which consists of 44 hours of speech from 100 uh, speakers approximately, and also libre speech, um, which comprises of 430 hours with 1.1K uh, speakers. So now I will go to the second part of my talk, which is the Streamlit part. So I will first introduce Streamlit and then I will go over to the demo. So to understand Streamlit, we need to understand why it is uh, why it's interesting to use. So data scientists are in the business of building apps. They make dashboards, they make uh, data browsers, they make useful uh, apps that are easily usable by different users. And their building flow is oftentimes starting from a Jupyter notebook. They convert it to a Python script. And after experimenting a Python script, they convert it to a Flask app. When they need more features, they iteratively go through this um, workflow. So notebook, script, and a flask, and then iterate until yeah, it converges more or less. So the problem with this workflow is that there are some maintainability issues, and it is often difficult to, to, to iteratively, iteratively go through this process. So Streamlit is an app for data scientists and the key idea is to make web apps as easy as writing Python scripts. And it uses a traditional iterative scripting process instead of a layout and event flow. So the workflow is basically you start with a Python script and you slightly annotate it to make it an app. What are the core ideas of Streamlit? It embraces Python scripting. Everything you can do in a Python script, you can do in a streamlit. You treat widgets as, as variables. So basically you can substitute variables with a widget, such as SD slider, which shows a slider, and you can reuse these variables as widgets iteratively. Furthermore, you can also reuse data and computation. So basically when you have a function that computes something intensively and that requires a lot of resources, you basically can cache the results. So now I will go over to my uh, demo. So um, here I show my demo and on the left side, you have my script, my Python script basically. And this is basically all that you need to run your uh, Streamlit app. On the right hand side, you see my browser, which uh, shows uh, basically my app. And I will give a bit more explanation about my uh, script and then I will show you or demonstrate you um, the workings of my app. So in the first um, lines, you basically uh, see how I uh, import some, some libraries basically. But the only thing you, that is important for uh, this demo is that you, can, that you have to import uh, Streamlit. And you can easily um, output, um, yeah, you can easily output a certain text in your app 
by uh, using uh, doc strings and you can use a uh, markdown in uh, these specific uh, doc strings. So I put a hashtag and then some, um, some words and then it will be automatically um, converted in, into markdown. After I show my title, I need to load my uh, models and I do that in these lines. And as described before, I need an encoder model um, shown here. I need a synthesizer model. And lastly, I need a vocoder. So these three models are um, loaded here. And afterwards, I can output um, a certain state uh, or I can print a certain statement. And I can simply do that um, by using an sd.txt uh, command. But in this case, I also um, save uh, a certain uh, output. So I specified earlier model load state. And I say, OK, I output that while um, I start the next following lines, lines I'm loading uh, pre-trained models. And after all my models are loaded, I show that this process is completed. So this is the process of uh, loading my models. And then I start uh, the process of recording my own voice. I, I will uh, yeah, showcase how, how you can uh, do this. So I will, um, I will record my own voice. So I specify a file name and I click to record. So welcome to my uh, first root slab at lunch. And yeah, this basically uh, loads uh, or records uh, my voice for five seconds. And how does it exactly work, um, this uh, section of recording? So I say, if a certain button is clicked here, then you do cer certain stuff. And if the file name that I specified uh, with uh, sd.txt input, if it is um, not empty, then I start recording. So after recording, I save it and I can play the recorded audio and I can simply do that using sd.audio. So all these um, commands are very lightweight and simple and they are readily available from a streamlit, uh, which I abbreviate as sd here. So I imported streamlit as sd. So all these uh, widgets like sd.button um, SD dot, dot, uh, audio, they, they are all very accessible. So afterwards, I create a certain figure and I can output, output it to my, um, to my app using sd.pyplot. So this is basically the first section where I record my own voice and I output a certain uh, figure and I show a certain audio. So afterwards, I want to um, yeah, choose a certain recording for which I want to um, yeah, uh, generate my embedding. So here, I look into a uh, yeah, certain folder. And I will show um, yeah, the, the files I find in a specific folder. And I do that by using sd.selectbox. So sd.selectbox is another uh, widget uh, with which you can interact with uh, the app. So yeah, there are different uh, widgets. And yeah, each time I select a different one, um, yeah, a different embedding uh, gets generated. So we can also listen to it. Uh, so for example, let's take this one. The Norsemen considered the rainbow as a bridge over which... Or um, yeah, this one. These take the shape of a long round arch with its path high above and it's... So basically the idea is to um, yeah allow uh, to listen to different audio recordings uh, from the app itself. So how does it work? Um, you have a select box and if you select a specific file, then uh, you load in, um, yeah, you generate a certain embedding and this embedding will uh, then be um, shown uh, as below here using the sd.pyplot uh, um, yeah, figure again. Uh, here I added another sidebar, but I will perhaps explain it later. And I also uh, show um, or I allow the user to listen to a certain audio. So this is uh, the, the, the second part. And yeah, and in the third part, I can synthesize um, 
a specific uh, sentence in a specific uh, voice. So I can I can do that as follows. So while this is uh, generating, I can give uh, more explanation about uh, yeah the code. So on the left part, you see I start my um, I start my third section again in in a string with some markdown, and I ask from the user a certain sentence using text uh, underscore input, and if um, if the button of uh, click to synthesize is clicked, then the speech will be generated from that specific text. So yeah, that's basically it. So we see that um, yeah, the, the speech generation has finished and we can uh, listen to it. This is a big at Apple. So yeah, that was uh, basically an example of uh, how um, yeah, speech synthesis is uh, generated. Um, yeah, so this basically concludes uh, the demo of um, my app and it, yeah, it consists of uh, three sections and yeah, I've shown all of them. So first you record your own voice and then you can choose an audio record. Uh, for example, I could choose my own voice, but the quality is not that high. So yeah, it's better to use high quality uh, recordings and based on your own voice or a specific other audio sample, you can synthesize text. Um, in that specific uh, voice, basically. So uh, that concludes uh, my demo. Um, thank you, Wakit. Um, I have a question. Um, so uh, right now you um, you say there's like one um, so there's one fingerprint for um, for each voice, but how could the speaker encoder encode a larger audio sample uh, from the same speaker? So right now you only have like uh, five seconds, but what if uh, like I speak for uh, for one minute and you want to generate a fingerprint, how are you doing that? So yeah, uh, basically when you have um, yeah multiple uh, audio files, they get clustered um, yeah, in, in Centroid. And yeah, for longer audio samples, they can uh, be sliced into uh, different samples and then uh, they will be clustered together uh, yeah, in a centroid uh, based on the similarity uh, metric. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Um, and also I see that uh, like um, the main model is built in three main building blocks that have been, uh, that have been fully trained. Would there be any way to, um, to connect those three building blocks into one end-to-end -end trainable model? Um, well, the encoder and the, yeah, the encoder and the synthesizer um, network are basically um, yeah, built separately because if they are uh, trained end-to-end, -end, um, yeah, you need uh, a lot more uh, data of, of each uh, user. And by decoupling the speaker encoder and the synthesizer, yeah, it allows uh, to to use a lot less data and to uh, yeah use embedding basically. Okay. Um, when would you recommend using Streamlets um, in a business setting? Um, so yeah, Streamlit is is a is a package um, which allows for quick prototyping. So if you can quickly, if you need to quickly prototype things and it, it needs to happen uh, fast, then um, yeah, it's interesting to use Streamlit. It's also easily deployable on AWS or another uh, cloud platform. So yeah, it's, it's uh, very lightweight. So if you want to uh, quickly make an app and easily deploy it, then I, I would go for uh, Streamlit. But if you wanna make more advanced um, apps, then yeah, other uh, packages, or frameworks might be more interesting, such as Flask or Django or something else, I think. Um, there's a question from the audience, uh, from Nemanja. He asks, does Streamlit allow making dashboards? Does it support tabs and such? Um, so Streamlit is uh, quite lightweight. So in essence, you have uh, a main column, which is uh, basically your, um, yeah, your main app, and then you can make a sidebar. And yeah, I will I will show it. Um, so I also made it here. So here I have a small uh, uh, 
uh, sidebar and in this sidebar you can easily add stuff and how do you do this um, adding stuff in your uh, sidebar so yeah for example you can uh, here I have a certain text and I can say okay if I want to show it in my sidebar I can easily put uh, before every command sidebar and I save it run it and yeah you will see that uh, stuff appears here so the same for um, yeah for other uh, stuff um, yeah you can basically use the uh, sd dot uh, sidebar stuff uh, okay. so yeah that's uh, all very uh, sim simple basically um, but that's it actually so it, there are advanced yeah possibilities where you can uh, generate uh, multiple uh, tabs but um, yeah, then you need to refresh uh, each time the entire page. But uh, I think uh, the the basic uh, possibilities of, of Streamlit are that it is for fast prototyping. So that, that's the main idea, I think. Um, yeah, so I think indeed, like um, as Nemanja is mentioning now, the sidebar is just a control panel um, for the main view. Um, yeah, I guess that's correct, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, you, you can manipulate it in such a way so that you say like, okay, uh, if you click on a specific header or if you click on uh, a specific tab, then you can uh, change the entire page actually. So in a way you can um, yeah, work around it, I think. But um, yeah, the main idea for a Streamlit is that it's a very lightweight. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions from the audience? You can uh, always um, put them in the Zoom group chat if you're shy. Can we ask them? Yes, you can ask them directly. Hi, White Kid. Hi, Dorian. Hi. Thanks for the presentation. Really good. Um, I also have a similar question to the one Nemanja asked. Uh, so here we really see a mapping between the code and the, uh, the application. It's like a one page, one page. Um, could you have in the code, like split the codes in separate files and include these files in, uh, like with uh, some imports or whatever to, uh, to make it more e like easier to, to work on the app as a team? Uh, yeah, it should be no problem. I think you can, yeah, easily uh, split the files and import them. Okay, thank you. And uh, you can also uh, create multiple, um, multiple tabs so um, yeah if, <laughs> you can also separate uh, the workflow in different tabs as well mm. any other questions um Gio Karek, uh, has an interesting mention for everyone um, an annotation flexible layouts will be coming in the next update of streamlet so um yeah I suppose that it's um, being maintained and that uh, next year we might have more interactive um, mm. dashboards available. Mm. So yeah, now I basically showcased uh, my app, but you can also, um, so basically how do you install Streamlit? So you do uh, pip install uh, Streamlit like so. And um, yeah, to, uh, to, to look at uh, different examples of uh, Streamlit, you can just uh, type Streamlit hello. And uh, basically what happens is um, you get an app uh, like so, and then you can uh, yeah, select a different demos. So you can uh, yeah, choose demos like so, and then you will have different examples so that you can easily play with it. Uh, you can also uh, look at the code itself. So it's all uh, very available. And so here you have uh, different uh, options. Uh, you can also, yeah, there are different options and it's a good idea to uh, look through it yourself uh, to see what is possible in the app itself. So yeah, that's, that's a different idea to, to get to know uh, the Streamlit app. It also has a very good documentation on streamlit.io. So you can also uh, look more deeply into that uh, if you're interested. Okay, thank you. If um, there are no more questions, uh, I'd like uh, to thank everyone's attendance and um, see you next month.
I don't know um, if it will be the DevOps or the data engineering guilds that will provide the content, but um, yeah, happy to see you there as well. Have a great day, everybody.